Okay, welcome back, students. Let's move straight to code of ethics. When we talk about ethics generally, ethics is seen as a unique selling uh, proposition of professional account. I'm very sure we must have done this during our days of corporate strategic management and ethics. But um, in this, as regards this, we want to look, look at it with respect to this accounting field. Yeah, we're able to do business ethics, uh, professional ethics, and all. Um, saw some ethical theories, like relativism, um, absolutism, and oh, but yeah, we are just trying to narrow it down to the confines of the profession and in auditing and accounting as a whole. Now, when we talk about ethics, I said we see it as a unique uh, selling proposition of professional accountants, as if they do not adhere strictly to the ethical principles, um, there's no way um, they can earn good fees why this is as a result of um, uh, paying some you cannot be paying someone uh, for advice or assurance if you do not actually trust them or believe in their work as such um, there are some ethical principles that should uphold us or that should guide us and as such uh, we have professional bodies that regulate the auditing uh, profession um, they actually set high standards of behavior for their members even including their their their, their student members and their code of practice um, apply to all the members, uh, whether in public practice or not. And these details of rules um, of conduct uh, uh, vary between professional bodies. But, well, all the major bodies have a code that are broadly similar. And um, this particular, um, as regards this particular area that we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at um, the IFA code of ethics for professional accountants that's the I, um, IFAC um, international financial uh, uh, that's the IFAC code um, of ethics for professional accountant which has been published by the international ethics standards board for accountants international financial accounting committee that's the IFAC code of ethics for professional accountants they have actually published something write something down they have actually published something which is um, they have published the international ethics standard international ethics standard ethics standards ethics standards board for board for accountants so I call them the IEASBA and the professional um in um the the you um I said that they have actually um uh, we are looking at the IFA code of ethics for professional accountants published by the International Ethics Standard Board for Accountants. Um, we actually refer to as the code. We refer to as the code, quote and unquote code. So uh, we have to be aware that ICANN has actually adopted. Uh, ICANN has actually adopted the IESBA code in their own localized code. Which has been called the professional code of conduct and guide for members so that's what we call it the professional code of conduct and guide for members and we also have to note that the substance remain largely unchanged more like we just um copied everything word for word and you get as i've said the icon code of ethics and conduct is based on the iesb's um uh, iesba code of ethics um which actually set out certain fundamental principles about how its members should behave and it also recognizes how its members could be subject to certain threats which would become uh, which would compromise their behavior and i've actually suggested ways in which we are it's i would, I would actually we are going to consider every bit of this looking at the fundamental principles the threats and also the safeguard majorly that's what we are going to be looking at today so there's no need to actually um, disturb ourselves as regards Oh, what are we going to be doing today? Majorly, that's all what we are going. To, all what we are going to be dis discussing will be 
majorly from there. So now let's move on quickly. Let's consider the um, conceptual conceptual framework approach to the professional ethics recognized. We have the fundamental principle, which I have said, I've spoken about the fundamental principle. Fundamental principles. We have um, this, which are actually subject to threats. That is the threat of the fundamental principles. Then lastly, we have how the threats must be addressed. And this is what I call the safeguards. The safeguards that must be in place. Safeguards. And please let's note that um, this code applies. I've said it before. It applies to all members of ICANN and also to all ICANN students. So if you are a student member, don't say, oh, because I'm a student member, this code does not. It applies to you um, because one day you become a member. And we should actually note that um, it applies not only to those in public practice, probably the auditors, but it also applies to those in industry and commerce, those in business. It does not only apply to those in public practice. Please, let's know that. Now, let's look at the fundamental principles quickly. There's no time to check time. The fundamental principles. Number one, the, the, the fundamental principles are five. I call them the five fundamental principles. The, the thing is, uh, at this stage, if you are not familiar with the five fundamental principles, then it's a sorry case because um, as an ICANN student, even at ETS level, it has been tested, the fundamental principles. And the thing is, you can have it tested under any course as it relates to ICANN. That's it. You can, they can, it can be tested under advanced audit and assurance, it can be tested under corporate reporting, that we have seen it several that can be tested under strategic financial management, can be tested under advanced tax, even in case study, it can even be tested in any, any mention it, mention it, it can be tested anywhere. So don't say, oh, I don't want to read this. No, 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 it, it doesn't, it's not about you don't want to read it, you have to read it. So you have to understand the fundamental principles. Let's move on. The first one is integrity, integrity. What we are just saying about integrity is that oh a professional accountant should be straightforward and honest in all its professional relationships and business um, dealings in all its straightforward straightforward you have to be trustworthy straightforward don't be corny don't be deceitful straightforward uphold um integrity the integrity of the profession you have to be straightforward and honest being honest being honest straightforward and being honest okay honest then and that one is um objectivity objectivity when we are talking about objectivity here we are just trying to look at oh a professional accountant shall not compromise professional or business judgment uh because of bias or conflict of interest or probably undue influence of Order. So, as a professional accountant, your yes must be yes. Don't let anyone put you under unnecessary pressure. That's why there are some things we have to actually have to consider that can actually expose the um, the auditor to some um, threat of objectivity. Probably the fear. I'm going to talk about this when we as we proceed. So, please let's ensure that um, as an auditor, uh, or probably you are a, you are a professional accountant and not in public practice ensure that your um your professional judgment or business judgment are not being subjected to bias or probably a conflict of interest or probably um having to issue it out under an undue influence of others that's what we are simply talking about here let's move to professional competence and due care professional competence and due care as a professional accountant um a, you are mandated to have a continuing duty to attain and maintain professional knowledge and skill at the level required um, of your clients to ensure that uh, such client or employer receives a competent professional service. And please, if they are going to be receiving that professional, competent professional service, it should be based on the current technical and the professional standards and some other relevant legislation. Imagine um as a as, as a professional accountant or an accountant not in practice anyways but public practice you are not familiar with the finance act that just came out and now it affects your profession you are not financed with the new amendments to the company and allied matters act you know there are 
particular things that you should update yourself we don't say oh because of i'm now qualified it does not concern me again many people just gonna drop um you have to keep updating your life that's why you see most people going for mandatory continue professional um education just to actually keep that level of competence um so that their clients can actually benefit from those particular standard or competent professional services now <clears throat> A professional accountant, um, talking about due care, a professional accountant shall um, exercise or act diligently in accordance with applicable technical and professional standards. Whenever you are carrying out your job, ensure you do. Don't 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 let it be subject to negligence. Don't um, take due care, necessary skill, and due care in um, in actually um, doing your work. Act diligently in accordance with um, applicable technical and professional standards so that's what we're actually talking about here now let's talk about confidentiality confidentiality i'm very sure this is the this is not the first time we are actually hearing of this when we talk about confidential confidentiality we are just trying to say that oh a professional accountant uh, shall respect or we respect the confidential um confidentiality of information that he has actually acquired as a result of is or a professional or business relationship and as such we not divulge any such information to third party except or without proper and specific authority like we can have um, situations whereby there are uh, specific or legal um, professional rights or duty to actually divulge or disclose then you can actually do so but if they are not under any legal um, or professional rights to the, or if it is in the public interest to actually disclose you should not divulge such information you know more like you are auditing a listed company and you have gotten some particular information as a result you're actually using it in the capital market uh, more like an insider dealing is actually legal so you don't actually have to use or divulge those particular informations to third party that can actually use it so you are you owe your client that um or your business um um the people you are working for in business a, a duty of confidentiality and it's one of the core fundamental principles of um ethical code of conduct okay and <clears throat> uh confidential confidential information i also have to squeeze this in that confidential information must not be used for personal advantage i said this earlier on or uh of the professional accountant or third party that's why i made mention of insider dealings using information for your own advantage it's, it's not to go financial advantage lastly let's look at professional behavior <laughs> in fact this is one of the areas where i i love so much professional behavior uh we are just trying to look at whatever behavior you are going to be doing as a professional does it actually bring discredit to the profession that's what we're actually looking at and as such we are just trying to say a professional accountant shall comply with relevant laws and regulations and thereby he has to avoid any conduct that the professional accountant knows or should uh, know might actually discredit the profession so more like you seeing a charter accountant uh fighting with a boss or doctor and he goes oh give me my change you will not do this again this can actually bring discredit to the profession you know during uh when i was actually receiving um as a student there was this class we are having then um under um now corporate strategic management and ethics used to be management governance and ethics then so we're in this ethics class and the lecturer was like oh explaining the same fundamental principles and he made mention of professional behavior that even as a chapter counter you must not be seen eating probably seeing a chapter counter eating roasted corn on the road and also we all laughed and said ah how does it want we eat and uh, actually um if someone sees you outside we got to know that okay probably someone sees you and oh this is a charter accountant okay then the person will be like oh so this is how all of them do in their as charter accountant they eat on the road they eat uh, corn on the <laughs> on the road or probably well that was actually uh, more of a sarcasm so and what we are just trying to say here is that okay as a professional accountants just try to avoid things that would bring discredit um follow all le legal rules regulations comply with relevant laws you know all these things would ensure that you are a um, law abiding citizen even to the profession and also to the country as a whole so as such it won't be able to bring 
um, discredit to the profession. So please, um, let's let's move on. Let's look at threats. Let's look at threats to objectivity. Um, sorry, threats to compliance with the fundamental principles. There are some particular threats um, that can arise um, uh, in when we are trying to comply with these particular fundamental principles. Let's look at those threats. We have self-interest threats. Self-interest threats. So, and this particular threat can actually, we can actually sit under, it can actually influence independence, which in the long run also influence your objectivity. So when you are not independent, how do you want to be objective? Now let's consider the first one, self-interest threats. <clears throat> or before we actually talk about that, let's just talk about um, threats generally. When we say threats, um, to fundamental principles. We are just trying to look at it that, okay, they are, um, they are matters that could result in accountant or audit firm acting without integrity or without sufficient competence or without ensuring confidentiality or in a way that discredit the profession. And however, we are just trying to look at uh, threats to the fundamental principles, which are largely threats to the independence and objectivity of the accountant or the auditor most of the threats to the fundamental principle usually come as threats to independence and objectivity of the accountant uh, or the auditor and this code actually recognizes um the following um general sources of threats to the fundamental principles that's what we are actually trying to um look at now first of all let's look at the first interest threat um the self-interest threat when we talk about self-interest threats, this actually arises when the accountant or the audit firm has a financial interest. Simply put, as a financial interest. As a financial interest. I think we are still going to look at this in detail as we proceed, but let me just explain each of these financial interest as a financial interest. Or other interest, but mostly it usually be financial interest or other interest. Even those other interests can have financial interest embedded in it, or other interests. Are we together? Uh in a particular matter, and typically, uh, this actually means that the accountant's decision might be influenced. It may be influenced um, by that particular self-interest. And as such, the accountants will therefore not act with objectivity and independence. So can you see that it's a, a big threat to the ICANN fundamental principles? Like, what are some examples of this particular um, of this particular threat? Threat we can have in a situation whereby um, probably the accountant or the auditor has um, some shares, substantial shares in the company. You see that that's a party has a financial interest in the company as such. It's actually a threat to the fundamental principle of objectivity. And that one is uh, when he accepts goods. Or probably, you see, when an auditor goes to the field and all, you give them gifts and all, you are just trying to buy them on your side. And as such, if the long run, if you are giving them gifts and not trying to do uh, do this, do that, in the long run, gonna, the auditor will see that I'm having a particular interest. If I do this thing, if I do this particular thing to their uh, statements or to their financial statement, it can actually stop this gift from coming in or this particular. So, and as such, um, it can actually pose as a threat to your independence and objectivity. So, accepting goods, services, or hospitality from an audit client um, that are neither um, trivial nor inconsequential. That's what we are actually talking about. Let's look at self-review threats. Self-review threats. I'm just um, basically giving us what we need to know as regards this. I think we are still.